Welcome back. This is lesson 13 of machine learning Zoom Camp session two, and we will talk about regularization. In the previous lesson, we added categorical variables. So we implemented some code for handling uh, these categorical variables, and we added uh, them to our prepare x function. And actually, this is not the same code I used for the previous lesson. I lost this code and I had to rewrite it, but I think this is very similar to what we had to do. And then we extracted the feature matrix X, and then we had a very, very high uh, root mean squared error. So I think in the previous video, the it was a little, little bit uh, lower, but yeah, it was very high. And when we looked at the weights, the weights were very high. In this lesson, we will uh, look why it, it happens. Remember the formula for a normal equation is this. So for training our model, so we have this gram matrix. And then uh, we multiply it by x transpose, and then we multiply it by uh, y, and this is our w. So the issue, uh, the problem we have here is this with this part. So we need to take an inverse of this gram matrix. Sometimes this inverse doesn't exist. So it usually happens when we have uh, uh, x, which is our matrix, right? So we have uh, multiple columns, uh, multiple rows. And sometimes in this matrix, uh, the feature matrix, some features are, could be, let's say we have uh, column two and column uh, three, they could be duplicate features. Um, and in this case, um, usually the inverse of uh, X transpose X doesn't exist. So we can quickly uh, check it. So I prepared the matrix here that uh, see that uh, the, the, the first uh, column is different, but second and third, they have the same values. So it's a duplicate, uh, um, duplicate columns, column. So let's turn it into uh, an numpy array. So yeah, we have this uh, matrix X with our uh, features. And now we want to compute this um, gram matrix. Here, what we see is this column and this column has the same values. So in this case, when something like that happens uh, in a matrix we want to invert, uh, the inverse simply doesn't exist because there is, uh, you know, in linear algebra, we say that uh, one column is a linear combination of, of other columns, which means that it's possible to ex express the column number three with other columns of the matrix, which is basically just a duplicate of uh, column two, right? So let's see what happens when we try to inverse it. And then we use uh, this function for computing the inverse. And it now complains that this matrix is singular. I cannot uh, compute the inverse of this. Right? So the inverse of this x transpose x doesn't always exist. This is not the case, though, for our particular uh, problem. So here we didn't have any, uh, so we didn't see this error that uh, it's a singular matrix. And the reason for that, usually the data is not uh, super uh, clean. Uh, in a way that sometimes there is noise. So let's say uh, when we uh, record uh, our observations, sometimes maybe instead of uh, writing five, we just write for five zero uh, five point zero 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 one, right? So in this case, so it's uh, still the same matrix except we add a tiny number here to one of the uh, to one of the values here. Right? And then in this case, we can see that. Uh, this is how the trans, uh, this gram matrix looks like. Here, these two columns are no longer um, the same. So they are a little bit different. So this one has this 0 0.05, and this one has, uh, uh, so basically they have, uh, they're slightly different now. So now this matrix is not exactly singular anymore. So the this column, third column is not, a duplicate of the second column anymore. And what happens is this matrix becomes actually invertible, um, at least numerically invertible. So we see these huge numbers here, right? And so let us, uh, let's write it uh, to inverse, right? So it tries to find the inverse, even though the inverse shouldn't exist. So it comes, comes up with these huge numbers, right? So we have these are very, very huge numbers. And when we uh, multiply this, so when we multiply it by x transpose by uh, y, I think 
we need uh, the y as well. So y could be, I don't know, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So we have, yeah, we actually have three. Um, yeah, we have three observations here. So if uh, our y looks like that, then to compute the w, we, uh, yeah, so what we end up uh, finding is that for this feature, it's fine. And this is the unique feature, but for this, for the second and the, for the third one, um, like it's basically just some large, large numbers. When we have a situation like that, when we have, let's say, uh, duplicates in our feature matrix, then we have this problem. So to solve this problem, what we can do is we can add a small number to the diagonal of this matrix. So let's say if we add a small number, uh, I'll call it alpha here on the diagonal, then it should solve our problem. So let me uh, let me show you that on a smaller example. So let's take a smaller matrix um, that we can use to illustrate this. Um, use something like this. Right, so we again have a, a column that is a duplicate of another column. And uh, yeah, so what we want to do is now put it into array and try to inverse it. And so it complains, of course, because we need to add a small number here, let's say, and here. So now, yeah, you see that uh, it actually is able to find an inverse, but the numbers are still quite big. So I think if we do, if we add a few numbers here, so they become a little bit larger. And as I said, one way of uh, fixing this problem is to add a small number to the diagonal. So we add a small number to the diagonal. And now that this helps control. Um, so now these numbers became smaller and uh, the larger the numbers we add to the diagonal, uh, the, the more we have these weights under control. And the reason it works because by adding something on the diagonal, we make sure that uh, now it's uh, less possible that this column, column number three is a, a duplicator of column number two. To implement that, let's say if we now undo uh, undo everything. So let's make it, uh, let's remove. Uh, so now, yeah, we again have this problem. And what we can do is um, to add the same number to the diagonal is, uh, remember we have this um, uh, I matrix, say of size uh, three. Right, so this is the, our identity matrix. When we add this x to x matrix to our identity matrix, it adds one on the diagonal, right? So here we used to have one, now we have two, here we have two, here we have two. So now we can actually multiply this i by some small number, let's say, and then this way we add only that small number to the diagonal. Let's call this uh, also, x transpose x and when we try to invert it now we don't have this problem anymore so this is how we solve this problem and this is uh, called regularization so we kind of regularization i think means here controlling so we're controlling the weights that they don't go uh, that they don't grow too, too much and uh, this uh, thing here is actually a parameter right so the larger number we have on the diagonal the smaller um, actually the values here of this um, uh, inverse of x tx. Right? So if we have something even bigger here, you see these numbers are very far from what we used to have previously. So in a way, this becomes a parameter, like how much regularization we add to our matrix. And with that, now we can uh, re-implement the function we have. Yeah, this one. So let's uh, take uh, this and slightly change it. I'll just call it uh, train linear regression regularized. And then we have uh, one more parameter, which I will call R, which is short for regularization. And uh, 
let's say we can have some default parameter for this, which is, um, I don't know, 0 0.01. And what we need to do here is uh, we need to basically add that. So uh, to add uh, a small number to the diagonal. So we need to have to know the size of uh, our XX shape zero. Yeah, so now it will create, uh, it will add, uh, we need actually R. So we'll uh, add this amount to the main diagonal and the rest stays the same, All right? So let's execute it. And uh, what we need to do is we can actually take this, what we have here, and just replace this function that we used previously by this new function. And let's use some value for R. Okay, and we see that this result is actually not only it's much better one that we have with not regularized version, but it's also better than uh, what we have, what we had before. So it's actually like 0 0.5. Uh, so this is what we had previously. So it's uh, approximately 0 0.5 improvement, which is, uh, I would say it's a considerable improvement. So... Yeah, so by adding a number to the diagonal, we were able to control our weights to, regular, to regularize our model. And this R is a parameter. So because if we set it too high, then maybe our model becomes worse, right? So maybe we we'll set it too high. Yeah, you see like our model becomes, uh, like it's very difficult for a model to work. And if we set it to too low, let's say if we use zero, then we are back to the usual um, linear regression. So now we actually need to find what is the best value for R. And this is what we will do in the next lesson.